Winchell's Donuts, Yum Yum, is dead, and the story of how it happened is pretty sad. From being the donut king in the West Coast with over 200 stores, having around 1,000 stores nationally, and opening international stores in some parts of Asia, the brand now struggles for relevance. This is the rise and fall of the former donut king of the West Coast. Vern Winchell, the founder of Winchell's Donuts, was born in Bloomington, Illinois on October 30, 1915. When he was nine, his family moved to California, where he attended Alhambra High School and Pasadena City College after his high school graduation. After graduating from college, Vern went to work for General Motors. But along the line, he decided it wasn't the life he wanted. The founder wanted to own his own business and not work for someone else. So Vern created his own car business, Winchell Motors, where he sold used cars, and also Winchell Music, where he sold jukeboxes. These businesses were profitable, but Vern? He wanted more, and he pursued it. Vern planned to open a hamburger stand, but was too late to set up his business. Another entrepreneur built their hamburger stand across the street from where Vern wanted to open his. Despite the setback, Vern wouldn't quit his ambition of creating a fast food stand, and he soon found an alternative, donuts. The founder's friend told him he could make big bucks selling donuts, and Vern decided to give it a go. He got $27,000 and decided to convert a commercial property he owned in Temple City, California, to a donut and coffee shop that he named Winchell's Donuts in 1948. But Vern knew his idea wasn't novel so he added an extra twist to draw in customers. So the founder allowed the customers to see how the business made their donuts through the shop's windows. The idea was a massive hit. His customers loved the idea, and Vern soon opened two additional stores in Huntington Park and Southgate, California. And if you like to learn about the history of your favorite eateries, subscribe for more content like this. The two additional stores didn't replicate Vern's success in his first store, but he remained determined. Soon, the stores began to record profits, and Vern added new outlets yearly. The stores grew to the extent that the company had to buy a new facility in Alhambra to help boost the production of donut mixes, and also the company put its headquarters in Alhambra. Vern decided to go public, and in 1961, investors began to trade Winchell's stock over the counter. Then the company started to look at expanding out of California and set its sights on Arizona and Colorado. Business continued to be good, and the donut company found a way to make it better. As it moved its headquarters and operations to South El Monte, California, the company began to sell franchises. From opening around two to three stores a year, Vern's firm began to open about 40 new stores yearly. In 1964, the business began to spread its influence to the Pacific Northwest. It also expanded its menu, adding the apple fritter, a donut-shaped snack. This menu item was a hit with customers, which helped increase the company's revenue and popularity. Winchell's Donuts became so popular that the United Fruit Company offered to buy it for $19 million in 1966. Unfortunately, the deal crumbled after nearing completion. The company continued to make sales, and Vern eventually got an offer he couldn't refuse. An offer that would ultimately destroy what he built. It was this offer that led to Winchell's Donuts to become Winchell's Donuts Yum Yum. After reaching 255 outlets in 1968, Vern sold his company to the troubled Denny's restaurants for stocks in a deal worth around $30 million. Denny's allowed Vern to continue to head the donut business while giving Vern a position on its board of directors. In 1971, the donut business bought all of its franchises back and brought them under Denny's. In 1972, Vern became Denny's CEO, and under his leadership, Denny's Restaurants and Winchell's Donuts earned incredible profits. Vern's leadership style, marketing techniques, and insistence on quality led the donut chain to expand to 1,000 locations in the United States, while also having stores in Japan, Holland, the Philippines, Spain, and Korea. In addition, the donut company made around $200 million per year, and business couldn't be any better. Then, everything began to crumble like a pack of cards. After recording massive success in the 70s, the brand began its 80s badly. In 1980, the company closed 150 stores after losing around 32 stores at the end of the 70s. During this time, Vern left despite helping the company reach $680 million in sales. 
The founder pursued real estate and settled into his horse-rearing passion, which he had begun to nurture since 1930. While life was good for Vern, the business he left behind suffered as it continually closed stores. To save the donut business from collapsing, Denny's returned to franchising, but franchise owners had to pick from the existing company-owned units. The company began focusing on quality and training its franchise owners to ensure their products would meet the required standards. It also began to send regional consultants to assess the products and ensure quality. To ensure maximum profit, the company opened new outlets in busy places where it could benefit from people rushing to work in the morning. Despite making the most of its revenue during early mornings, the company opted to have a 24-hour service as it got patronage from police officers at night. Eventually, Denny's went private and spun Winchell's Donuts off, but things didn't get better for the donut company. It continued to lose its stores. The business fought back by introducing new items to its menu like cinnamon rolls, and it also began to offer its donuts to supermarkets for them to sell. However, nothing seemed to work, with the donut firm continuing to drown in losses. Despite this, it maintained considerable influence on the West Coast and was the second largest donut chain in the United States, although it was a distant second to the leader, Dunkin' Donuts. With the company's continued failure, four board members resigned, including its president and CEO. TW Services acquired Denny's, and its investors were in for a massive surprise as Winchell's failed to make a profit. So the investors sued Denny's and Winchell's, accusing them of offering substandard products. With all this going on, Winchell had a leadership change, with James C. Verney becoming the head of the donut business. Verney went to work immediately, addressing employees and trying to improve their morale. But the company continued to suffer. More outlets closed, and it turned out that Denny's was indeed behind the mess. When Winchell's Donuts was under Denny's, all the profit the donut business made went to Denny's, a troubled company at the time. Winchell didn't have enough funds to advertise itself properly, and its stores used old equipment. In addition to this internal problem, the business had to deal with competitors, with Krispy Kreme becoming more aggressive toward acquiring Winchell's territories later on. Krispy Kreme began its aggressive expansion in the 90s after Winchell's Donuts later turned Winchell's Donuts Yum Yum and failed to get its act together. The donut business was sold to Coniston Partners, who soon after sold it to Chateau Holdings in 1989. Chateau put up 263 stores for sale, with Pizza Hut willing to buy. The business continued to operate, appointing Robert Galastro, who introduced a new menu to include sandwiches in a new store called Winchell's and More. Under his leadership, the company began investing in equipment to make frozen donuts, which it sent to its stores. The company was finally turning its fortunes around with the Winchell's and More stores, but this turnaround would be short-lived as the Winchell's and More stores and its new menu faded out. Galastro left the firm in 1991, and Nancy Parker took over. Under her, sales significantly improved, only for it to dip again. And in 1997, she also left to allow Tom Dowling, a former Baskin-Robbins VP, to head the donut company. However, despite its best effort to keep the donut company profitable, it kept on closing its doors. The leadership of Winchell tried different tactics to make sure that the donut company would return to its former glory. There was the Winchell Express, which allowed Winchell's to have service counters in convenience stores. There was also the Winchell's World concept, which allowed customers to watch the mechanized preparation of their donuts. The business also introduced the Warm and Fresh marketing campaign, which meant customers wouldn't pay for donuts that had gone cold. However, all of these efforts didn't translate to sustained success. In the end, Chateau sold it to Yum Yum Donuts in 2004. So the donut company became Winchell's Donuts Yum Yum. Interestingly, like Winchell's, Yum Yum Donuts is also a California-based donut chain. Yum Yum began its business in 1971 when Philip C. Holland began to sell donuts from a former Orange Julius store. Holland met Frank Watasi through a newspaper advertisement he put up when he needed a business manager. Soon, Holland expanded his business and sold half of his stake to Frank. The two went on to open over 100 stores together before Holland bowed out and sold the remainder of his interest to Frank. Frank immediately brought his son Lincoln to work with him. The duo continued to operate their business and refused to sell. When Yum Yum bought Winchell, it wasn't the salvation Winchell needed. Yum Yum paid more attention to its line of donuts than that of Winchell's, leaving the once kingly donut chain to die a slow, natural death.
Wincho's Donuts Yum Yum isn't what it used to be. When it was at its peak, it recorded impressive gains, but its reign at the top was short, and since then it has had a staggered existence. In the end, it all came down to the decision of the founder to sell the business for stocks initially. What do you think? Is Vern Winchell to blame for the decline of his firm, or was it out of his control? Let us know in the comments, and don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to support our channel.